Everyone and their grandma knew about these changes, and with the amount of leaks that were coming out about the American Express Gold Card, they should have called the National Guard. So for some of you that have been living under a rock, what are these official changes? So the annual fee has definitely increased by $75. It used to be $250, now it's $325. The new welcome bonus has kind of disappointed me. It's 60,000 MR points after you spend $6,000 within six months, but they do give you 20% back on your dining purchases up to $100. And officially, this offer ends on November 6th of 2024. So that's quite a long time for an elevated bonus. However, you could probably get a better bonus somewhere else, especially if you go on to the official Resi website. And if you click on the American Express card options, you can easily find the welcome bonus for the American Express gold card for 70,000 MR points after $6,000 spend, the same exact spend within six months, and you get 20% back up to $250 as a statement credit within the first 12 months instead of just the first six months. So kind of crazy. I was expecting the public offer to offer 90,000 MR points, but I don't know. Maybe the white gold is more expensive to produce than we actually think, which also, if you didn't know, they have a limited edition white gold variant of the American Express gold card. Looks pretty cool it's basically a i would say an inverted version of the original gold card for the multipliers you're still getting 4x on groceries 4x on restaurants 3x on flights but i think this is actually new you get 2x when you book uh eligible travel purchases through the amex travel portal which is pretty interesting. The Uber cash benefit stays the same. The dining credit gets changed a little bit. They took away Shake Shack and Milk Bar and replaced it with Five Guys, but the amount is still the same and how you use it is still the same. However, since the annual fee has increased by $75, they also added a little bit extra benefits like giving you a Dunkin' Donuts credit for $84. Kind of strange that they added Dunkin' Donuts compared to the other coffee options that are out there. Um, but we'll talk about that here in a bit. And they also added a $100 resi credit, which are split up into a biannual credit, exactly the same as the Saks Fifth Avenue credit on the American Express Platinum card. And everything else seems to have stayed the same. Now, who are these people who are actually benefiting from these changes? Definitely a lot more benefits that a lot of people can use that aren't living in the metropolitan areas, the huge gigantic cities. There's a bunch of five guys that are easily accessible throughout the country. However, I noticed that there aren't that many five guys towards the West Coast. Definitely the East Coast people will benefit, but it's also the same with Dunkin' Donuts. If you look at this map, it seems like Dunkin' Donuts is also very much concentrated within the East Coast compared to the new change of the Resi credit where you're really benefiting from the Resi credit if you are living in those metropolitan areas. Now, also for some reason on the West Coast, specifically I heard a bunch of reports and data points that Washington State doesn't have that many Resi restaurants restaurants. Hopefully that will change after the acquisition of Talk, which used to partner with Chase. Maybe it'll open up more restaurants. However, overall, I do think that these changes benefit the average person. Because before with the annual fee of $250, the maximum amount of credits that you could, you know, earn back for yourself is only up to $240 versus this one, you're getting quite a bit. You're getting almost $400 worth of value, but only paying an annual fee of $325. Honestly, if you didn't value that Dunkin' Donuts credit at all, you could just skip it and still be coming out ahead of the annual fee. Even better for people who have a renewal fee before October 1st because you'll be enjoying that lower cost annual fee of $250. Anyone renewing after October 1st, unfortunately, you're gonna be hit with that $325 charge. However, with these changes to the American Express Gold Card, it kind of makes me worried about American Express's future, and let me show you what I mean. And I don't think you can talk about the new changes of the American Express Gold without, you know, picking up some Dunkin' Donuts. It's pretty crazy too. So this is a pretty large, <laughs> one of my favorite drinks, the frozen hot chocolate. Of course, don't get it all the time, once a month, probably not. Um, it only costed me for a medium about $5, $4.69. Nice. And the chicken biscuit sandwich was only $3.99. So this is definitely a benefit for the consumer, but maybe a problem for American Express. So something you may have not noticed with the new change, and rightfully so, I think a lot of us who make under probably $150,000 a year, $200,000 a year, this change probably wouldn't have affected you at all. And that change is that they capped the dining multiplier. The grocery category was already capped to begin with, but the dining category, now that's interesting. I think a lot of us know, how does American Express 
make money because they don't issue a lot of cards, especially comparing it to Visa and MasterCard, even though they have financials that can compete with Chase, MasterCard, and Visa. The answer is simple. The wealthy like to use American Express because they offer a lot of benefits to them. However, with this change to the American Express card, that may not be the case anymore. And that's especially seen with this controversial Dunkin' Donuts credit because Dunkin' Donuts doesn't have the same kind of connotations of luxury, especially when they could have just went with Starbucks. But now you're probably saying Dunkin' Donuts probably subsidized that credit so that they could give it to American Express cheaper. Maybe American Express only pays like $2 for it versus Dunkin' Donuts has to give the rest of the $5 to the consumer. And that's exactly what I'm saying. I don't think American Express is in the business of making their high spender consumers necessarily happy anymore. And they're really just selling the annual fee to normal folks like me and you. And that's especially seen with the younger generation because the younger generation thinks that, oh, American Express is a rich card. You have it, you have status, you, um, it's a metal card. You just want to collect it. Half the time, a lot of them I've talked to and seen, they don't use the credits properly. And most of the time, they're just happy to get a card that says American Express and just be able to show off that, hey, I have an American Express card and it's a metal card. And personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. What you do with your money, that's up to you. But one thing that has been concerning me for a while is, you know, American Express, it used to be kind of hard to get these charge cards. You had to have like a really good credit score. You had to have like a 750 credit score, 780 even, and probably a little bit of a higher income. I get comments and I'm happy that they're approved for it, but a lot of 18 year olds are just randomly getting approved for these American Express charge cards, which they're not even charge cards anymore. They're hybrid cards because before with charge cards, they're kind of promoting you to pay back what you owe. But now with a hybrid model, if you can't pay back what you owe, then you're just going to carry a balance just like a credit card. And they have a bunch of other programs like Planet that promote to carry a balance. Now, if American Express is targeting the wealthy, the super rich, that they don't carry balances, they don't pay interest because they always pay back their card what's the point of offering all these features simple especially after the gold card refresh they're no longer targeting the super wealthy they're targeting the middle class upper middle class americans which shown given the dungan donuts credit and given the option to use the dining credit at five guys now these aren't bad things and can benefit the consumer however it just reminds me of kind of like how ipsy i don't know if you guys know what ipsy is but it was basically like a makeup beauty bag it was kind of like a mystery box and they would give you samples from different companies but when ipsy started to get more popular basically brands would pay them to get into the ipsy bag but the consumer still had to pay for that monthly subscription so what now the average person can take advantage of benefits that were only offered to the rich isn't that great? And for the most part, it is. But now you kind of have to think about the consequences with that. You've heard of companies like Gucci, Coach, Kate Spade. They used to be seen as if you had that item that you were like super well off. But now that's not necessarily the case, especially within over the years where they're trying to make it more accessible to average people. They cut down on costs. They make everything cheaper it kind of falls apart more often. And that could be a serious danger when it comes to American Express as well, especially as we've seen, me and Anthony called the American Express concierge and they used to be, you know, seen as the one of the best. But now there's a lot of services that they're not even willing to offer. We don't technically assist with that, but I- oh. And just every year you see American Express is cutting corners. I've even seen on Reddit that people who own the Centurion card, one of the high-end American Express cards, the concierge service has definitely de graded over the years and now you see they kept the american express dining category and yes for the average person it's not going to be that big of a deal but it may be a big deal for someone who makes over two hundred thousand dollars someone who's a manager or director that flies all over the place and gets meals comped or they just pay for it from their own pocket it might get them to rethink the card and get rid of the card stop spending on that card and pick up other cards and if that happens it goes back on to us that we have to support american express's operations and i could see more cost cutting and just increasing increasing annual fees but who knows maybe they just cut just enough for us to not notice or care and they finally stop increasing the annual fees but yeah just something for you to think about i think overall the changes to the gold card have been a win and i can't wait to see uh white gold cards that'll be pretty unique and i'll see you later